And we're just gonna completely get it all on the counter, spread it around. I like to uh, pour a lot of ground beef. Okay, I'm gonna pour black beans all in here. Yeah, just like that. The mole is great. And then I add jalapenos for spice, really. And I put them kind of... I'm gonna go ahead and say that I don't think this needs any more spice. We've covered all food groups. Everywhere, like a little bit of the juice just to get it all on top of all of your different layers. And then taco seasoning, this is really, really important because it's not, you don't get enough spice without this. The germs, the bacteria, that's plenty spice. I'm secretly thinking that this might be a comedian or something. They're not addressing the fact they're making the food on the counter. It's all over. That is so is much really taco seasoning. Because there's just, to me, there's just not enough spice without this. So you can use one or two packs. I typically do two, but I'll just do one for now. This is possibly the only ever scenario in which cheese does not make everything yeah. better. You can take any kind of um, mixers like this. Have you been to a Cold Stone Creamery? Like an yeah. ice cream shop? Yeah. Ice cream cloud, just gonna blend it up. Just all the way in here. Wow. What was the point of making the stripes on lining up every ingredient? If it literally looks like my dog's sick. Same shade, same texture. It mixes into the cheese and it just makes for such better bites, honestly. This is better than any normal nachos you've ever had, I promise. This does not look better than any nachos I've ever had. And I buy them from the movie theater. My standards are very low. You grab tortilla chips. No, please don't use your hands. Please don't use your hands. I'm kind of lay them all out in here. As many as you can get, kind of just to cover the top. And then you're gonna get your hands in here and- No! Them, just like that. <laughs> And you're gonna take your ice cream scooper. What are you gonna do with an ice cream scooper? What is she not gonna do with an ice cream scooper? Nachos, just like you this an woman ice cream cone, deserves this, jail. Instead of bites of ice cream, you have an entire nacho cone. A nacho ice cream just cone is not something that like. I, I woke up this morning and wanted to hear. I can't even process how horrifying this is. Every single thing about this is terrible. I guess I'm gonna go shopping for the ingredients and we're gonna make it. I'm looking at that nacho creation and I'm thinking that my life choices led me here. I've got a plastic wrap at least to protect this, but in its nature, it's still low-key disgusting. I don't understand why she couldn't have done that on a plate. Turns out nacho cheese sauce is very expensive at the supermarket right now. And because I'm anticipating that this is not going to be amazing, I've bought nacho cheese sauce in a powder. Yes, that's a thing. I've never used this before, so hopefully this is going to become ooh, a nacho cheese sauce. It's a lot more liquidy than I was thinking. Oh wait, no, it's getting thick. Wow, this is like magic. So this is supposed to be our nacho cheese sauce. This is weirdly creamy. That became thick and like smooth. This might be the only good thing coming out of this video. That's so good. That does not have the right to be as good as it is. So we're really doing this. There's no turning back now. <laughs> this is all over my kitchen counter. Okay, it's not as yellow as the nacho cheese sauce that the lady used. I think the lady used her hands to spread it out. I mean, I prefer to just, you know, use a spoon for this. I'm suspicious that some of the people in this video are going to be comedians. Well, some of these are very real and you will see. Would anyone actually do this? What do you guys think? It was infuriating the fact that she created all these layers and then in the end it just it didn't matter. We're gonna use some beef. This is already cooked. Second one is some shredded lettuce. Mine is chopped up. It's not shredded, but trust me, this will get shredded. I thought the beans had to be cooked. I didn't know you could use them straight from the can. She probably knows about cooking as much as I do. Not much. Next up, a little layer of salsa. It started really well. Now the lines are blending a little bit. Me with face tune. This is some sour cream, which is, I think, a little bit more liquid than the one she used, but it's going to be fine. And this is, I think, the last uh, stripe, which is some guacamole. It's literally called squeezy guacamole. <laughs> they probably couldn't call this the real deal. This is horrifying, and we're not even in the horrifying part yet. So there we go. This is the alternative flag of Mexico. The cursed flag of Mexico. If anyone has a Mexican grandma, please make them react to this part of the video. Just that. That would be the best early birthday present I could ever receive. I want to see a Mexican grandma watch this. The lady adds some jalapeno peppers after. Ooh, let's go a bit of water. 
That's gonna be spicy. I love flavor on my food. Like I'm not the best at cooking, but my food does have flavor. I put loads of salt, pepper, loads of spices always. But this lady uses a whole bag of taco seasoning. And she said sometimes she uses two of them. We're gonna do the whole bag. It keeps pouring, it'll never stop. It's endless. It smells, <laughs> it smells like Taco Bell. <laughs> This literally just brought me back Taco Bell memories. And honestly, I love Taco Bell. They're the only fast food company that is always so nice to me. I would never drag them. But at the same time, it does not, not smell like a Taco Bell power bowl. I almost forgot, but the next step is some cheese. I think the lady uses some sharp cheddar cheese. There's no other way. We're going to mix this up. I hate the textures. Ooh, do you hear the lettuce? If you're wondering where you can get this, a DIY store, this is used to scrape paint off walls. I would rather be eating the paint. This makes me think this might be real because this actually works to blend this. I'm gonna mix the cheese now. Oh. Imagine doing this in your kitchen counter and having no worries about that. The lady blends this quite well to the point where this becomes almost like smooth. If I close my eyes, I would think there's like a beautiful Mexican style salad in front of me. Then I open them and it's like, my next video is gonna be a 20 minute apology sitting on the floor crying to all of my Mexican viewers. That might not even cut it. Gonna need to prepare my black hoodie. Next up, the lady adds uh, some tortilla chips. She uses her hands to like, you know what, I can't do that. This is where I draw the line. I'm gonna use the spatulas because it's been working so far. As soon as I put it in here, it's gonna become all soggy because of this is just a wet blend. It's weirdly scoopable though. Listen to it. Me watching people make ice cream on TikTok. Nope, it doesn't roll up. This is essentially what the lady made. I mean, literally, I'm looking at the image, it looks exactly the same. So the next step is possibly the most horrifying. We made a cone out of a tortilla wrap. Didn't think about this part. That is going to be the cone of our ice cream. So we're going to try to scoop this into balls. <laughs> My ice cream scoop doesn't have like a release button it doesn't need one it actually works you know sometimes you see like a hack that seems like really good but it doesn't work the same way as it does in the video i hope this makes any sense nobody goes through this length to create this for it to be fake on tiktok right i don't even know what texture this is gonna be once we bite into it let me add one more scoop and there we go this is what we've created i am truly sorry like i've never been more sorry for anything that i've created how do you say bon appetit in spanish when provecho, oh no, I am so sorry. <laughs> I hate myself for what I'm about to say, but it's not terrible. I know it looks gross, however, the texture of it is weirdly balanced. It tastes like a cursed guacamole. It's got textures that I'm not sure if they belong there. It is very, very salty, which I think is thanks to, you know, a whole packet of this. I wanna make it very clear that I would never make this ever again. This is like horrifying. The flavor is not as bad as it looks though. It really makes me think that this lady is for real. Making some fresh chicken noodle soup today. Gonna go ahead and add in half an onion. Putting in some drumsticks. I love to use the chicken that has the skin on it. it gives it so much flavor. Gonna go ahead and put in about five. Did she seriously drop the onion like it's a like it's a lush bath bomb? So many things that already upset me about this in the first five seconds that why does the chicken have skin if we're just boiling it? She's gonna bite on that chicken leg. The skin is gonna be like chewing gum just because it's me and my son. Son? I'm calling adoption services. Okay, I went ahead and did six, but now we're gonna go ahead and let this boil, and whenever it's done boiling, we'll come back. No an ounce of salt. Gonna scoop out all this stuff out. No, 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 you can't afford to lose any okay, flavor. we're gonna go ahead and add in our veggies. I'm just putting carrots and celery. The salt, the pepper. Now we wait till the vegetables soften. Lots of noodles. Now we're gonna wait till the noodles are done cooking. What is it gonna taste now like? Past the water? Oh wait, the chicken bouillon, the chicken stock. In the end, after everything has been boiling for like an hour, I'm gonna guess that she's going to enjoy it. Mm. And the Oscar for best actress goes to. This has ruined my day. And now we gotta make it. 
After watching this video, I don't even know if we should carry on with this because I don't know if I'm mentally strong enough to carry this. I'm not good at cooking, right? But I feel like the things in this video particularly, the things that bother me are things that are so basic that even I know that you're doing wrong. First thing that this girl does is put a whole freaking piece of onion in there. That's it. That's the flavor that we're gonna get for literally the whole of the cooking time. Actually, I'm gonna be fair. She does remove a little bit of a chunk and she calls it cutting the onion in half. So that's our flavor. <laughs> what does she think this is? Like a lush bath bomb? Maybe it's gonna disintegrate and give flavor to the water. Second of all, the chicken. I don't like using chicken drums because it's got too many bones. But the girl was stressing out that the most important part is that the chicken has skin on. And then she proceeds to just boil the skin. Isn't it like a thing when you're cooking chicken with skin on that you have to crisp up the skin beforehand in order to get the flavor out? In order for this not to be like chewing gum consistency? Somehow that's gonna be the least of my worries in this chicken noodle soup. The lady did six pieces because she was cooking for her son as well. Poor child. Some poor child's idea of a chicken noodle soup is this. I'm gonna stop making fun. I'm gonna give this a fair try. Maybe this is like some new technique that like the flavor comes in the end of the recipe in the very last 30 seconds. That is literally it. No salt, no pepper. This is the flavor in our chicken noodle soup. So this is going to cook all the way until the chicken is going to be fully cooked, which I'm guessing is going to take 40 minutes. So if you're thinking on adding any kind of flavor to this, nope. So we're about halfway through cooking this and I'm not even gonna lie, it literally smells like... <coughs> It smells so gross in here. It kind of smells like chicken in a terrible, sweaty kind of way. We gotta do a quick stop because there's some flavor in here and we want to make sure we remove every bit of flavor. So you know those white little spots, which I don't even know what they are. I guess it's like fat. That's the whole point of chicken noodle soup, right? Why are we putting all this chicken skin if we're removing literally all the bits of flavor. Someone please let me know that I'm not crazy, that this is not a step. I've never done this before. So now that the flavor is all out, we also gotta add some vegetables. And once we add the vegetables, this is gonna cook for, I guess, another like 15 minutes. I honestly am pretty sure this is not going to taste nice. So I'm doing this with very little care. <laughs> if anyone is going to also attempt to follow this chicken noodle soup, if you've got that kind of free time, you will understand the frustration that it is not to add any salt. And also the frustration that is to look at this. I do not want to get covered in those juices. Vegetables go in, so this is gonna cook for another 15 minutes. There's no danger of salmonella. Even salmonella is not staying for this one. Salmonella bacteria suddenly making other plants. I'm gonna add the pasta now as well. I think this is kind of similar to the pasta shapes that, that I used in the video. We gotta resist the urge to put any kind of spices. We have the chicken stock. We should be adding it at this point. I am literally scared of this. This is not look good. This is the plainest chicken noodle soup, if you could call it that, that I have ever seen. And I've been to Whole Foods. Last step in the video right before serving is adding the chicken bouillon. I'm gonna go heavy with this. It's cooked for like 45 minutes with just one piece of onion in it nothing else. I cannot wait to show you guys what it actually looks like. So let's start with some of the pasta and the vegetables, which are surprisingly cooked. I wish we could stop here, but now uh, we've also got a whole piece of chicken with a real chewy piece of skin on it. And my favorite part of this dish, please play the French music. Yep, that is... Let's get some of that dirt water, which is literally no other way to call this. It looks like a fish tank that hasn't been washed in a few days, except I would rather drink that. Finding Dory? I might. <laughs> might find Nemo, might find Dory. You can find anything in this cloudy water. Even Nestle wouldn't touch this water. This is our TikTok chicken noodle soup. See, this is why I'm really confused about these videos, because like, this chicken noodle soup probably has more views than Chef John's chicken noodle soup on YouTube. I don't get it. I'm trying to understand this, but I can't. Ooh. Oh, I don't like this texture. I can't touch this. I can see the hairs in the chicken still. Mm. I would not feed my dog this. I love my meal. Hello, Ritu, but the guest bubbles are so unhealthy and can cause gluten addiction. Luckily, I have a great hack. When you boil the Ritu, all... Wait. What? 
Did she just say that the bubbles of Red Bull cause gluten addiction? I'm either really stupid or I am no scientist, but this is not adding up, but let's see where this is going. Listen, luckily I have a great hack. When you boil the Red Bull, all the bubbles are removed and you are left with high energy organic vegan energy butter. Nah. Vegan organic butter? I hope that Jesus gives me an enlightening moment where I'm finally gonna get it because I don't get this. I don't get it! This lady probably has like 15 million followers on TikTok. Like, people must think this is good. There's no other way. Now you can make energy sandwiches that keep you awake and taste great. Choice. I don't get this. Like, people must be trying this at home. I don't... I've watched this like 30 times and it still doesn't make any sense. Why is she using monster energy drinks but talking about Red Bull? So many questions about this video, but one thing I do always have is a selection of monster energy drink. I'm wondering which one I should use for this. This is my personal favorite, the green one, which is actually really difficult to find. Maybe we should do a blend. <laughs> There's literally no instructions. Um, you just pour the monster energy drink. I'm assuming we're gonna need quite a lot because this is gonna have to cook down for a while. Imagine if I actually eat this whole thing. I will literally pass out before we get to the end of this video. Stay tuned for the results. <gasps> this one is like bright blue. I'm gonna put a lot of this one. <laughs> oh my god, this is gonna take so long to cook down, but this looks like... Why can I never show you things? So this is basically it. We've got the stuff for the sandwich, which is exactly the same that the lady had on the video. The only step is to basically cook this down. Maybe this lady is onto something. Maybe she's on something. We're gonna have to cook this really high. If this ruins my brand new pot, I'm gonna be so upset. What setting do I even use? Soup? <laughs> I guess so. I wonder what this is gonna smell like. Okay. Let me attempt to give you the visuals. Um, so far, it's just bubbling up. It looks kind of pretty. It's kind of satisfying to look at, I'm not gonna lie, but it's not reducing or anything. Maybe we need to increase the temperature. Actually, that's probably what we should do. I literally use three different types of energy drink. My house is going to smell like, like a frat house. People are gonna come knock on the door and think my name is Chad. So I'm assuming this is gonna take longer than I was expecting. I'll give you an update if this starts to change. Guys. So this is kind of what's going on. It's been around 15 minutes. This is not looking like that paste. Where is my organic butter? I am very confused. What's going on? Should I stop it? <coughs> and the fumes are like, it smells toxic in here. Maybe this? Is this supposed to be it? Is this all we've got? No. Do I just put this on the bread? <laughs> this is not even enough. Desperate times call for desperate measures. This is not what I was promised. <gasps> oh my god. That's it. That's all we could get from that. And it's not even as sticky. It's too late now to question the process. As this is cooling down, it's going kind of sticky. So it does feel a little bit like jam. Maybe just actually needed to cool down a little bit. This is uncooked bread, so it's almost crispy in the edges. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing the lady did, which is put a little bit of ham, two slices of cheese. That's it. <laughs> the most cursed sandwich ever. Imagine if this tastes good. The whole house smells of monsters, so I don't think I would even be able to smell it anymore, but let's give it a try. Oh. Mm. Oh my gosh. <sighs> It's so sour. This literally, it freaked me out. I was, no, I was not expecting that. It tasted like a regular sandwich for a moment. As I was biting into it, it started to become sour spicy. Suddenly the fire eyes in the lady kind of makes sense. A cheese ham toasty with some sour patch kids. That is what this tastes like. I, it's not for me, I'm not gonna lie. Maybe. Oh, it is really sour. It makes me feel weird. It tastes cold. Baked mac and cheese, the new viral feta pasta. Have you tried this yet? I saw it all over TikTok and it's amazing. Perfect for large families. What is a yellow cube in the center? That's all butter and cheese all around it. There's too many yellow things in this image. This is literally like 50 shades of yellow. Beautiful lady, but the face expression, this is horrifying. Imagine you're sleeping and the first thing you see is this lady with the mac and cheese tray like mine and tastes so good share with a friend um 
Yeah, let's move on to the recipe. There are so many things that I don't understand about this. I don't even know where I should start. What is Velveeta? Velveta. Is it possible that I've never come across that in my entire life? I think the closest thing, ingredients-wise, American processed cheese. Someone needs to explain this to me. What is Velveeta? Who is Velveeta? Is Velveeta the lady? It's gonna ring as a name. The Velveeta is gonna go... Bam, <laughs> right in the center. This is very reminiscing of the feta cheese bake from TikTok. It was very requested last year that I would try it, but I feel like by the time that we got there, it was too late. This time around, it might be too early. There's nothing really terrible about this one. First of all, I think a lot of people would be upset that this is called mac and cheese. <laughs> that shot when you're mixing it fresh off the oven, that is anything but mac and cheese. All my American friends take mac and cheese so seriously that I just know they would be so offended at this video. They make like this bechamel sauce before they cook it. It's like a specific blend of cheeses. A tower of Velveeta is not the same. I swear there's more plastic in this than actual cheese. I know TikTok videos are supposed to be short, but I feel like 14 seconds for a recipe is, it's impossible, it's not a recipe. If you guys watch the whole video and I'm gonna put the links, I'm gonna credit every single one of these creators in the description down below. The lady doesn't actually explain anything. She just shows a one second clip of something and there's no measurements. There's literally very little information. Oh my God, final moment. Please play some epic song because this concludes our tower of Velveeta cheese. <gasps> he doesn't move? <laughs> I'm so scared of this. The mystery that is the velvet. <laughs> the video doesn't say anything about measurements, so... Yeah, we're just guessing. I've tried cooking pasta in the oven before and it didn't work, but I guess I wasn't following any instructions. I was just winging it. It doesn't mention anything about cooking times as well, so I have no clue. So we're gonna do the milk first. She kind of puts it all around. The money shot is gonna be when we get this out and we mix it. This is gonna be the crunchiest mac and cheese ever. So we're also adding some water. Next up, some cubes of butter. Even though we're adding milk and water, it doesn't seem like nearly enough liquid. This is quite a lot of butter, but I mean, something has to moisturize these dry noodles. So this is kind of what it looks like. I don't even know if the cheese should go in already. So, if you would have asked me to describe my ideal food when I was six years old, it would literally be this. Is this gonna work? Let's find out. It doesn't mention anything about cooking times. I'm gonna go and guess 25 minutes. Maybe we should add a little bit more milk to make sure this actually cooks. 25 minutes, I'm guessing, in the oven, and you guys do not want to miss the result of this. Oh! We're about to find out. I could be wrong, but this, it smells like the green... It smells like lasagna, like a white, creamy lasagna, so... The noodles are dr oh, There's a layer of noodles in the bottom? It's like solid. Let's see if we can make this creamy. I'm like lifting a whole layer of rubber. This is like one of those satisfying scooping videos. In their defense, it does seem cooked and it kind of went caramelized in some bits because of all the butter, it does smell really good. I only realize now that there's not been a single ounce of salt and pepper. But once you mix it, it should look something kind of like this. This is like a school lunch mac and cheese. Honestly, it's not the worst look ever. It looks as good as any mac and cheese that I could make, so I am curious to see. This sauce, the Velveeta sauce, is kind of delicious. It's very delicious, actually. I don't even think it lacks any kind of salt and pepper or anything. Part that I didn't like is the texture of the pasta. It's overcooked and undercooked at the same time. I literally, there's no better way to describe this. Some bits are like rubbery and then others are like crunchy. It's like, <laughs> it's putting the dente in al dente. It's gonna make me lose a dente. Want an easy dinner recipe that's better than Olive Garden? I love American restaurants, like the Cheesecake Factory, incredible. For me, that is incredible, like American style food. Olive Garden, not the same. Some water for angel hair pasta, add some chicken bouillon. Because chicken we stock like is going food. first. Take a pound and a half of shrimp, add a teaspoon of garlic and a half stick of butter. Let that cook. This is Next actually pretty good. Twist, add about a yes, salt, of pepper, of I mean, it's a bit. And parsley. Add one to two blocks of cream cheese. We like cream cheese, so I use two. Two blocks. <laughs> Usually it's like tablespoons of 
cream cheese, maybe like a quarter of a cup. Let that melt together. Then add about a cup and a half of heavy whipping cream. We don't measure. I don't know. Ooh. Full eight ounce bag of Parmesan cheese. Let that melt. She's using two hands to do <laughs> two bags of Parmesan cheese. I mean, this has to taste amazing though. All right, it's all good. We got the spinach. I'm glad I watched it in case I ever go to jail. That's my last meal. The last one because it will literally take me out. If we've complained about lack of flavor previously in this video, I can just go ahead and say that this is not going to be the problem with this. <laughs> we've got plenty of flavor here. We may even have too much flavor. I'm gonna try to do exactly what they've done in the video. So it starts off um, with some shrimp or prawns. What is that? This is actually pre-cooked because um, I want to go quick with this one and I'm sorry for the noise, but we just gotta... It is cooking quick. So to this, we're gonna add one stick of butter, which I don't even know what one stick is, but I'm assuming it's pretty good, right? I don't have a wooden spoon. I don't have a lot of kitchen utensils here yet. So we just gotta... To this, we're gonna add the garlic. There are a lot of ingredients in this. So, so it's supposed to be one teaspoon of garlic. The lady was very proud about not measuring anything, so I'm proud of the same exact thing. <laughs> I'm gonna give this a quick mix. Sorry about the metal on metal. I literally don't have a wooden spoon, so I'm gonna try to be very gentle. It smells like Cheesecake Factory. I was joking about the Cheesecake Factory, but that's exactly what it smells. So to this, we're gonna add the tomatoes. I've already hurt myself in this video twice. What's one more time? It's not my favorite thing, so I'm not like thrilled about tomatoes in this recipe, but I'm trying to stay as authentic. I don't know if this is like my subconscious or something, but it does smell like an olive garden in here. To this, we're gonna add the spices, which is basil and I don't know what the other one is. Very important, a lot of uh, chicken bouillon. And the last spice is salt and pepper to taste. No measuring once again. Ouch. Like the bottom of it is like toasty with all the spices. It smells really good, like really toasty butter. The next step, as you guessed, is two blocks of cream cheese. First block of cream cheese. I know this is going to taste amazing, that's the thing. Oh, it's lifting all the spices. I feel like Gordon Ramsay would be proud of this lady. Well, actually, no. Man, this is gonna be rich. I'm gonna do a break to give you guys the visuals. These are the visuals. It's so thick that I honestly can't even mix it. Like the spoon literally, <laughs> we've got 600 ml of double cream. I'm gonna do like maybe half of it, even though the lady did probably the full thing. But like, <sighs> I can't believe I'm doing this. It smells like cheesecake at this point. I just want you guys to be able to see how creamy that is. And if you thought that was it, no, we're also adding Parmesan cheese. I'm going to... Nope, we're not there yet. Still going. It is very, very thick. Oh, very similar. I'm looking at the video and it looks really, really similar. If you thought that the whole thing was very unhealthy, don't worry, we're adding some spinach to it. <laughs> Ooh. This will go from that to this amount. I'm gonna try to blend the spinach in a little bit. Spinach is the lace of vegetables, 99% oxygen. So here we've got the angel noodles, which the lady requested that we cooked in some chicken bouillon, just in case we didn't have enough flavor in here, so I did. So this actually smells really good. Oh, it smells like chicken stock, so... Why did I make so much of this? I don't know how this is gonna fit in my freezer, but it will. I was making fun of the lady for saying this is like Olive Garden. It literally looks like a photo shoot of like the Olive Garden menu. And that's it, I think. It looks exactly the same as in the video. I'm looking at the image and this is the same dish. So we must have done something right. It's not a bad looking dish. <laughs> I would be lying if I said this isn't a recurring dream of mine. I'm gonna try to plate this like a restaurant, maybe not Olive Garden, but like a fancy kind of way. Okay, there we go. I mean, Jesus take the wheel. That is literally the way to describe this dish. I have never experienced this level of creaminess. I think the pasta is slightly overcooked, but the sauce is so creamy 
that it's literally like biting into a cloud. It's like savory toothpaste. <laughs> this is incredible. I mean, all the flavors are here. This tastes like a restaurant meal. Like when you go to a restaurant, you're like, how do they make everything so good? Well, that's how. Butter, cream, cream cheese, literally just a lot of everything. And it tastes exactly like a restaurant meal. If you forget about health for a second, five out of five, this is incredible. This is the only way you should be eating your bagel with cream cheese. You need to slice it like bread and put cream cheese on each individual slice. Perfect. Perfect. This part is crucial. Put all the slices back together. Now the ratio of bagel to cream cheese is perfect. I can't believe that for a moment, I honestly thought, mm, it's kind of you got me. How can you hold it from like a different direction? Like they're pressing it together because you literally will not be able to hold this. I'm mad that I'm even entertaining this for a second that this could actually be real. There's no way this person is either, if they believe in it that this is actually a better way to eat a bagel. The thing that I find really confusing is the way I would normally slice a bagel to put cream cheese in. If you wanted a bigger ratio of cream cheese, just put a thicker layer. If that was the actual goal, just put a, <laughs> a thick layer. That alone fixes the ratio problem. Now, slicing it <laughs> the way they did, it's not even practical, you know? I feel like I'm playing Minecraft right now or something. Reverse Minecraft. I am never gonna be able to put this together. That didn't even occur to me. That's going to be a problem. Wait, no, I got it. I think. I mean, I hope that at least this sticks. I would honestly not be surprised if in the end this amounts to actually less cream cheese. So I'm doing just exactly the same as they've done in the video. They actually use a little bit more cream cheese. So I'm gonna do the next one with a little bit more. I never realized how similar cream cheese and glue. Ooh, but this really works as a glue. So that's where we're going. You can't even put this down. Look, everything is like covered in cream cheese. How do you rest it? I think the police is here to arrest me and I honestly can't blame them because this has to be an international security threat. Wait, this is upside down. Oh my God, this is so dumb. It looks gross. How do I, okay. When you use the wrong formula, but you get the correct result. Actually, the other way around, this is not the correct result. What is this? Can we please talk about how horrifying this is? This is one of the most cursed food items I have ever put on my YouTube channel. This is like the Annabelle doll of bagels. I shouldn't have said that. Oh, damn. I'm gonna be so scared before bed now. I'm just kidding, Annabelle. I love you. This is no joke. And now I'm thinking about Bloody Mary. Great. And it's literally 3.03 a.m. I could not be making this up. Back to this. This is, do you see how negative this is? This draining the energy in this room. <laughs> if you're gonna hold this, you literally have to hold it like this. You, you can use one hand to hold it, to be fair. How would you bite it? That is the question. I'm assuming sideways. I mean, it surprisingly holds. Wow, oh, that is actually a good ratio. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> As soon as I take my second bite, this is over. Watch this. <laughs> this is real stupid. This is so dumb. This might not have been the cringiest video in terms of the cooking process, but this was the worst one so far. Somehow the universe is gonna bring me something worse. So can't wait for that. This literally goes straight into horrifying. There wasn't even a start to this. It's just like the worst thing I've ever seen immediately. First three seconds. Very gently. And notice that the spaghetti is still uncooked. That I like to call Getty Spaghetti. <laughs> Out of all things that you should put your name attached to, keeping my mind open, it could go somewhere good. But as of right now, you don't want this to be Getty Spaghetti. You want this to be someone else's spaghetti. Why is, in a... Why is it in an oven tray? Yes, yes, yes. They're gonna release the sugars and it's gonna be just enough sweet. So that... Wait a minute, that was nerds? That mixed with Bulgarian seasoning? That's what's gonna soften it up. Exactly. I'm still a bit confused by these nerds <laughs> being in spaghetti spaghetti. Yes, the voice of reason. Right, it's been 20 minutes. 
There is no way in the world that that spaghetti oh is cooked. God. And by the way, that meat is literally burned. I can't say that I would do a better job. I'm going to keep it real. I don't think the spaghetti cooks in the oven because that's not a thing. I've never heard of anyone make spaghetti in the oven with the sauce only. You know it's about to get real when <laughs> we bring the gloves out. You know the recipe is about to cause all kinds of feelings and emotions in me. My request from this is to never ever in my life ever hear the words get a spaghetti ever again. So I've got a pen with some olive oil ready to fry the meat. I'm literally trying to textbook follow this. Two portions of spaghetti that are about the same. I'm not good at maths. If I was, I would be doing something I just hate touching meat. Bring in the plant based. I am ready for it. I will never look back. I'm very suspicious that this is not going to cook the spaghetti. I think that's what's going to happen. Ooh, I hate this. This is as horrifying in real life as it was in the video. It's literally no different. Okay, so while that's going, I'm gonna try to make another one. You need a lot of meat for this. That's why the lady only made two. I'm really confused because in the end result, the meat was really burned. So why are we even doing this step? Okay, so this one goes down. This is not a beautiful sight. I guess we're just supposed to turn it around as it cooks. Hmm, interesting. This is stuck. This is kind of falling apart, like the meats. Okay, this one is a little bit better. Weirdly enough, this is working so far. Like, it is going the way it did in the video. So, I don't know if this is too hot to show you, but... I mean, it's looking like Gettys spaghetti. It's toasty, it's cooking. So here's where we add at this point. One of them is holding, like, perfectly. The other one, it's definitely falling apart a little bit. So I'm not gonna move it. Hopefully this is all gonna tie in together. What do you call this? There's a name for it. Asada or something? I don't know. If this was it, if it came down to these ingredients, obviously the process to cook it like this, peppers, onions, could actually taste good, right? In the video, the lady uses this Bulgarian spice. I went on Google and there was literally a list of the most common Bulgarian spices. I've got like six of them here. So there's also salt, pepper. So now this is, I'm so sorry. Fun fact, I've actually never tried nerds before. So the lady explains that this is in order to the sweetness of it. It's going to blend with the food. Right now it kind of looks like a photo from a cookbook. I just watched the video and the lady doesn't use any water, but my tomato sauce is a little bit uh, thicker. So I feel like the spaghetti is not even gonna be submerged. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water. Honestly, the amount of cheese that the lady put on was so ridiculously small that I was honestly like, that was the only thing that could save this maybe. So this is it. It literally looks exactly the same as what the lady is doing. So obviously this is gonna go in the oven for specifically 25 minutes. I like it when there's a specific amount of time because I find that guessing is too stressful. So 25 minutes in the oven. Okay, so. Oh, that's dangerous. Ooh, this went terribly, but also I want to eat it. So one of them got covered in sauce, as you can see. Is it cooked? No. The one that was going well actually split open and this spaghetti, like this is so stiff. There is no way this is cooked. The sauce is nice and like toasty and sticky. So this was the one that went supposedly wrong, but actually, uh, maybe. This literally looks like one of those giant spiders from Harry Potter and the Chamber of the Secrets. It looks less appetizing than a normal pasta dish and the pasta, I'm pretty sure, is not cooked. It's crunchy, like, does this look like cooked spaghetti to you? Cooked spaghetti should never make this kind of sound. Nobody, the priest, every Sunday. It's definitely al dente, at least. The flavor is good. There's this sour sweetness that I think is the candy. That tastes really good. Now to the actual bad part of this. The pasta, even in the one that was actually submerged in the sauce, I wouldn't even call this al dente. Like you literally need a serrated knife to eat this. It's got this plastic rubber consistency, which was exactly the same with the mac and cheese. Inside the meat, I knew it, do you see that? The bit where it was inside the meat, it's literally raw. Let me try biting into it. Oh, it's like soap. I'm sorry, Getty Spaghetti. I would never, ever make this again. Apart from the sauce and the nerds. I have
had to hop on the nature cereal trend that is taking the internet by storm. Even Lizzo posted about it. I added my fruit to a bowl with some ice and coconut water and I tried it and honestly, it was delicious and so refreshing. Let me know if you try it out in the comments below. Keeping the tone of the video real, everything else that we've seen was so horrifying that this looks good. I'm like, I'm ready for this. I'm excited to get the ingredients and at least give my body something different. However, just call it a bowl of fruit and water because that's what it is. I love cereal. <laughs> Here we've got a bowl of ice that I kind of tried to crush a little bit because this ice is really chunky. I wouldn't be surprised if this one actually tastes good. I think the reason why so many people are upset at this video is because people are calling it nature cereal. It's because it's clearly not cereal. Cereal is nature cereal and I do have to agree. The only thing I don't have are blackberries and pomegranate, but instead I've got some raspberries. It's nature as well, so hopefully it's all going to work out the same. I mean, there's a lot of ice that is unblended because I don't know why I bought this chunky ice. But here's kind of... <laughs> so we're gonna add the coconut water. The ice sort of disappears and it just it just hits you how sad this whole thing is. I don't want to be two blocks of cream cheese in one dish unhealthy, but I also don't want to be coconut water is milk healthy. <laughs> Guess we're gonna get a little bit of ice and a little bit of everything and the coconut water. so cold. It's literally a bowl of ice, but it's freezing. That hurts your teeth way more than Lucky Charms. I don't know how I feel about the ice, but honestly, the coconut water with the fruit, I'm not mad about this. This is basically a deconstructed smoothie. That's literally what this is. It needs some sugar in here. That's the only thing. Like, the coconut water literally has zero sugar. Even sweetener to keep it healthy, that would make this a lot better. I would be down for a deconstructed smoothie, but nature cereal, let's not. It could go somewhere. I have made garlic toast. Just kind of flatten them out like this. Punch it out. Oh my god. I knew this was gonna be bad. No child wants to eat crust. I don't care who you are, but no kid wants that. Take those off. No child wants to eat butter greased up with your dirty elbows. <laughs> Imagine in school, what's your favorite food? Um, elbow toast? My mom's elbow on on a buttered piece of bread. For the mozzarella. Spread it on. Good. More garlic, because who doesn't want more garlic? Just a small dash of milk, just enough to get it kind of juicy. I'm finishing this video here if she puts the toast on top as if it's some kind of gourmet crust. That's it. I'm out. Put it in the oven. It looks so good. Does it? So good. This is my best one yet. This this is your best one yet. No, I don't believe it. These people deserve jail time. And we deserve it just as much because we're bringing it back to life. I ordered a pre-made uh, pie case online. This is why you shouldn't buy a pie crust on Amazon. <laughs> this is not the worst thing that's gonna happen to this pie today. Okay, I'm gonna get this part out of the way because this is the most horrifying part of the video and we're doing it. It'd be so much better to just spread the butter. Actually, in fact, don't even need to spread it. Leave the butter on there, it's gonna go in the oven. Okay, so we put a layer of plastic wrap so it's not as, as gross and then I literally hate my life right now. It's 4.50 in the morning and I'm spreading butter with my elbows. And somewhere in the world, it's also 4.50 in the morning and someone just hit the weird part of YouTube. Welcome. <laughs> this is horrifying. I have no words for how bad this is. I'm really suspicious that the people who actually made this are performing artists or something like that. I honestly, like, this is what I actually think it is, but obviously there's no way to actually prove. So we're gonna remove the crust exactly as they've done in the video. I mean, it shouldn't come as a shock to you guys. Obviously, I keep the other parts of the ingredients that I don't fully use. Anything that I use in this video that goes to waste, I will donate it times 10. I will put it on my Instagram, so if you're interested in that, if I got the time and patience to come here, 
there and waste food. I should also have the time and patience to do something good with it, so. So these are our SpaghettiOs. These SpaghettiOs are like some knockoff version. They honestly look even worse. And because the pie is broken, this is cursed times a million. This looks like an animated food, like from like Rick and Morty or something. Almost forgot, garlic powder goes in the pieces of... Is this supposed to be garlic bread? Milk, which honestly is just gonna go th straight to the tin because this is all broken, but... Mmm delicious. They've done like two layers of cheese. I'm only gonna do- that's quite a lot of cheese, so I'm only gonna do one layer. It goes our bread. I only need three slices, turns out. I hate that I'm trying. I will never not try, regardless of the cost. <laughs> a blessing and a curse. I'm gonna press this down just to flatten it. So that's it, I think. We did the powder, we did every single ingredient. Let's- let me reveal Thought it wasn't funny for a moment. <laughs> Let me reveal the crust before I put this in the oven. Beautiful. Ooh. Why is he always in his videos in which we're literally recreating one of the most horrible things ever? That the reality turns out exactly the same as the original, the expectation. It, maybe this is real. Maybe these people actually came up with this recipe. I mean, it did. Physically, structurally, it does work. Oh, we need a little bit of a sausage. I forgot there's sausages in here. Literally one bite of everything. Why does this look good? I am so, so sorry. It tastes good. I don't know what to tell you. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's my taste. It's garlicky. It's got noodles in it. There's not a whole lot to dislike here. Does it look repulsive? Am I fully aware? Yes, I am fully aware. I can see it. It tastes incredible. I will honestly eat this. Oh my god. Oh my god, it keeps getting worse. I don't know what else is gonna come next. Oh wow. Is there any more variety of coffee? Oh my god, straws. Why are they presenting this like it's a... <laughs> like it's a spread thing dipping the donuts into the frappuccino. I'm the most horrified that somewhere in the world Someone has a friend that when they go to their house They're presented with this. I love donuts. I love frappuccinos. I love all of these individually. I don't get this This is stupid. Drum roll, please because the award for the dumb There's no need for a drum roll. This is the dumbest thing in this whole video This one is not only it hits every level cringe pointless dumb wasteful infuriating I'm mad just looking at the image. I've got literally exactly the same thing that they used in the video I think well as close as it gets on my channel first one up is mocha coffee I'm not gonna use all of it because I can't drink all of this now. I'm gonna save this for tomorrow This one is a coca-cola energy drink, which I've actually never tried this before They'd need to pay me a lot of money to say good things about this. There's not enough budget in the world this tastes really weird. This one is a latte, which actually is probably my favorite one out of all of this. I've had a lot of energy drinks throughout this whole video. This is like, this is not good. I don't have the exact tray that I used on the TikTok. I've got this, which is <laughs> as close as it's gonna get. This is a Starbucks Frappuccino caramel flavor. The price of this was almost exactly the same as a Frappuccino at actual Starbucks. Damn it, it's delicious. Wow. I went on this TikTok creators page and basically the whole page is assortments, like ways that you can share foods, drinks. Some of them actually seemed really clever. Some of them were really pointless. This being the worst one. I think this was the most popular video on their page. Double shot espresso. I'm going to stay away from this one. Just taste. I'm gonna have to spin it so you guys can see it, but this is basically our assortment of coffees. I'm not saying this to like be relatable or whatever, like I honestly don't care, but I actually don't have a lot of friends or people who come over. But those of you who are like extroverts and you've got people over all the time, is this something that you'd actually serve to people? Because I honestly think this is really dumb. These are classic powder donuts. Uh, so we're gonna put them in the center, which is also what they've done. As I'm looking at this, this actually is starting to look less stupid and kind of cute. I don't 
know why. Okay, I'm gonna try to stay away from the double espresso, except I have no idea. This is like Russian roulette of me actually passing out. I'm gonna hit this one because I think it's the mocha. And that is supposed to be the way you enjoy this. I honestly thought it was really stupid. For some reason, this actually looks cute. Like, I'm not... Let me... That is not this good. <laughs> Separately, maybe, dipped. Someone please let me know, is this something that is socially acceptable to present someone with an arrangement of coffees and energy drinks? What? By the way, I never ask you guys for things, but right now I have been nominated for a Webby Award for food and drink and Honestly, it's kind of a big deal. Like if it wasn't a big deal, I'd just be like, whatever, let's get over, let's move on from this. But it's a huge deal and particularly embarrassing that I'm in last place with 3% of the votes. <laughs> Actually, I think today we went down to 2% of the votes. So that is, that's just been an incredible week. Clearly no one wants to go and vote, otherwise we wouldn't be there. But like, if there's one of you who actually has the time I'm going to put the link in the description down below. It's pretty easy. I'm going to put it directly to my category so you don't have to like scroll endlessly. You go on it, you tap on my face. Or like everyone else, you're going to tap on someone else's face and that's it. It's kind of embarrassing, but also there's no other way. Like you guys are going to go on the link and see that I'm in last place with 2% of the votes. <laughs> I have to laugh about it. There's no other way to process this. So. It's clear that I'm not gonna win, but I would love to be at least in fourth place, third place. Can we do that? If you're studying, if you've got a job, please, please don't waste your time. Please don't go and vote for me. This is literally pointless, don't do it. But in the chance that one of you has like an extra, I would say 30 seconds is how much the whole thing will take. The link is down below. I'm sorry and thank you and I'm sorry and thank you again and once again, I am sorry. <laughs> thank you for watching and thank you to those creators who've created these videos. I know I might have been harsh on some of you. It's all fun and not serious and I think you get it. Like if you go through my other videos, you'll realize this is kind of the tone of my YouTube channel. Like we don't take food and cooking very seriously and trust me, I have made bigger mistakes than all of these videos put together. If you scroll down, there's a subscribe button and a notification bell. A special thank you to those of you who've got my notifications on. I love you and I will see you guys on my next video. And this is, I don't know what this is, double espresso? Ooh, okay, now we're talking.